Okay, let's look at triangular matrices. This time we're going to let you do the simple case that involves short vectors, in this case vectors of size 3, uh, on your own. So what do we have here? We have a vector function we denote by L sub u. If we feed in a vector of size 3, then out comes a vector of size 3, where the first component is given there, the second component, and the third component. And what we want you to do is go do the homework exercise that asks you the question, is this a linear transformation? And if it is, what matrix represents it? All right, hopefully you were diligent and you actually went and did the homework exercise and hopefully you came to the conclusion that the answer is yes. So how do we answer the question? Well, we evaluate the function with the first unit basis vector, the second unit basis vector, and the third unit basis vector. We make the results of that the columns of this matrix right here, and then we check whether indeed the vector function computes the same as this matrix vector multiply, and the answer is yes. This kind of matrix is called an upper triangular matrix. Now, why is that? The diagonal elements are right here. The elements on the diagonal and above it have some value, but the important thing is that the elements below the diagonal are all equal to zero, and that makes it an upper triangular matrix. So, what is an upper triangular matrix? Well, first of all, the matrix has to be square. So here we represent an N by N matrix. Let's highlight the diagonal elements. Okay. Now, an upper triangular matrix has the property that all of the elements below the diagonal are equal to zero. There's also a thing called a strictly upper triangular matrix. What is that? Well, if you look at all of the entries on or below the diagonal, those entries right there, all of those are equal to zero. And then there's a unit upper triangular matrix. What's a unit upper triangular matrix? A unit upper triangular matrix has ones on the diagonal. So all of the entries on the diagonal are equal to one, like the identity matrix. And all of the entries below the diagonal are equal to zero. And we put no restrictions on the entries above the diagonal. Similarly, you can have a lower triangular matrix. The lower triangular matrix has zeros above the diagonal. And we put no restrictions on what's on the diagonal and below it. A strictly lower triangular matrix has zeros on the diagonal. Zeros above the diagonal. And no restrictions on what's below the diagonal. A unit lower triangular matrix has ones on the diagonal, just like the identity matrix, has zeros above the diagonal, and no restrictions on what's below the diagonal. Okay, let's move on and let's look at an algorithm that takes a matrix that inherently has to be square because triangular matrices are square and sets the upper triangular part of the matrix to zero, making it a lower triangular matrix. So think of it as the matrix originally has some values in it. And what we would like to do is set the values above the diagonal to zero. And we're going to use an algorithm very similar to the second algorithm that we had for setting a matrix to the identity. How does this work? We start by partitioning into four quadrants. We expose entries. And we set the entries right here, which don't exist, to zero. And we move on. Then we expose some more entries. Now we notice that this right, that 801 right here is just this element right there. 
we set it to zero and we move on we expose we set to zero we move on we expose we set to zero we move on and we're done so we're going to see triangular matrices quite a bit in this course so you better become very familiar with them 